Um, I just find this fascinating that he says Liz Truss was wanting to go too far and too fast after his mini budget, uh, and then it was it was the Sunday afterwards that he said, and there'd be more to come mm. in December, and that's what tanked the markets. Well, yes, and I, I think we need to be careful about using the phrase uh, tanked the economy or tank the markets. What happened was the cost of borrowing for the government rose, and that had a few knock-on effects. But actually, if we look at what happened to GDP growth, the IMF said that, that w the mini-budget measures would actually slightly raise GDP growth, um, although there were troubles, of course, with inflation uh, and the fiscal loosening associated with it. So a really mixed picture there, but it is interesting. Everyone's trying to get their story out first, trying to paint their picture of what happened. And it is probably no surprise that the uh, former Chancellor is coming out with his version of events uh, six days before the new Chancellor yes. will be uh, setting out his autumn statement and no doubt uh, setting a narrative there too. Mm. Yes, it's interesting, the timing, isn't it? Because he, he, could have, he could have delayed, he could have waited another week, uh, or he could have said something earlier, but he's saying it now. How do you read that? Yes, I think he's trying to paint a picture that it wasn't really his fault, that he was the guy saying, go more steady. However, there are some big questions around that, given, uh, as, as you rightly mentioned, the... Uh, the briefing that was done, several newspapers saying there's much more to come and indeed the, all of the measures that were announced were those within the mini budget. There wasn't something that there was then announced afterwards by Liz Truss. There weren't further measures that were announced more quickly, uh, through the, uh, the, through the start of October. That, that didn't happen. What happened was all of it announced back, uh, at the end of September in that mini budget and then the, uh, consequences of that and then the eventual U-turns as well. Now, what he might have been referring to was the uh, uh, around eight or so packages of supply-side reform that were uh, going to come, that were going to be announced before the, uh, the, the, the following statement and included within it. Uh, and yet, it's hard to see how those would have been destabilising for the market, because these pieces of supply-side reform aren't things that cost the Treasury money. They are liberalisations of the economy, making it easier to build houses, making it easier to build infrastructure, changing the way that migration happens, these sort of things, which the markets tend to quite like because they're growth-boosting measures that don't cost the Treasury or the taxpayer anything. In fact, one of the big criticisms of the way that the Liz Truss administration worked was that they did the tax cuts first and then how to pay for them was coming second in the supply-side reform. Mm. If they'd have actually done the supply-side reform announcements first and then followed with tax cuts, the markets might have been more at ease saying, you're going to boost the growth this way and that's going to pay for these tax cuts. Mm. So it's hard to see actually what the former Chancellor is referring to in thinking you're going too quickly after September. Mm. The speed happened before September. Yeah, it, it, is, a, it is a confused message isn't it? But, I mean, that's looking back then at what was an old government, looking forward to our current administration mm -hmm. and what looks like, I mean, I hate the phrase because it was wheeled out so often, but a winter of discontent. I mean, it's 100,000 civil servants going on strike on top of everybody else who's striking mm. at the moment. This is going to be extremely difficult. And we're likely in just a few minutes' time to learn that uh, the economy is contracting. Now, mm. this is a, a really tricky situation uh, for, for everyone. Of course, a third of the global economy is contracting right now. The United States is in recession. Many of other uh, allies in the, in the Western world are too. But uh, the idea that at the moment of recession, we're going to have some fiscal consolidation in the statement next week, that we're going to have tax rises and spending cuts as we go into recession. That is going to worry a lot of people because that's not what's a pro-growth measure. What's wrong with spending cuts? heading into a recession? Well, it is a contractionary thing. There's less activity in the economy. People forget that after 2008-9, that recession, uh, the coalition didn't make cuts until the co economy was growing again after 2010. Mm. Um, now, economists disagree as to whether or not it's the best thing to do. Spending cuts tend to actually reduce inflation, less activity, less mm. money being pumped around the system. But 
undoubtedly they will have an effect on growth, as will tax rises. So uh, there are some issues there in terms of whether or not the measures that are being taken to reduce inflation, the measures that are being taken to steady things out, might actually be measures that also prolong this recession that we're facing. Okay.